Good day everybody, welcome back to uh, DX Explorer for one more video. Now this one is a special one, <laughs> a video request, uh, trying to help out uh, one of um, the fellow amateur radio operators, uh, Luca, Italy Whiskey 2, Echo Papa Echo. I hope I'm not wrong, but that's what I remember. Um, and it's about using the true SDX, not with an external battery, but a power supply. And uh, I've used it uh, very much uh, with a power supply and not so much with batteries. But um, I did DX most of the time. And when I started to do local communications uh, with Romanian stations, I started to get like uh, very strange reports on the modulation in audio. So um, I was expecting that uh, probably I did something wrong in the settings and I messed up the true SDX. So I uh, <laughs> spoke to Andre from Raw Waves because they sent me the, the True SDX as a present. I also spoke to Manuel, uh, Delta Lima 2, Mike Alpha November, the man, <laughs> the two man. And um, yeah, I, I realized that there was nothing wrong with the True SDX. I had the proper settings, so clearly it was something else. Um, because I'm using a Ned Fend half wave uh, for the 40 meters band uh, the antenna. Um, I know that uh, in the past I was using uh, an RF choke, but I used that uh, RF choke uh, and I took it apart and I built uh, another 49 to 1 transformer for my portable antenna. So right now I don't have any RF choke and I thought maybe I have some of the issues that I have RF coming back on the coax and now I messed up my modulation. So um, anyway, uh, I've actually rebuilt the 49 to 1 transformer um, just to make sure that everything's all right. I had a really low SWR and technically I shouldn't have any RF coming back on the, on the coax. But anyway, uh, for, it's a good practice to actually have an RF choke. So I'll leave a link in the, in the video description um, about uh, how to build an RF choke. So I used the power supply, right? And the power supply that I had was this uh, 12 volts power supply, one amp power. Um, and it worked fine, um, but I was getting those uh, uh, really strange reports about the modulation. So I thought maybe I would need some filtering. And what I did, I found a schematic online. Let me get this one here. So I made this filter and initially in the schematic, I'm going to put it on the screen in a little bit. Uh, the initial schematic uh, came with a voltage regulator, like a 12 volt, uh, 12 volt uh, voltage regulator and it didn't have this capacitor. So the filter, it was just this. And uh, of course, if you want to use an external transformer or like a um, um, AC transformer, you, you will have like a AC coming in. You also have the rectifier bridge in here and some more capacitors. But uh, yeah, the original schematic, it was just as it, uh, just as it is on, on the screen right now. So if you want to use that one uh, with an external transformer, you can do that one. Um, but uh, that, that was the original schematic that I found online actually and I actually modified the filter. So when I, I actually had the board longer and I had that rectifier bridge uh, in here with the capacitors and everything that was needed, but the transformer that I had was only giving me 11.5 um, volts AC and it was not enough for the voltage regulator, but I found out uh, <laughs> that problem thanks to Andre. He, he um, uh, told me about that because I thought that uh, if the capacitor is raising the voltage a little bit and uh, I was actually getting uh, somewhere around 12.5 volts into the um, voltage regulator, I, I thought that's fine. And it was if I wasn't uh, running anything, so I was just measuring the power output uh, on, the, on the filter, I would get about 12.5 volts. But every time I was transmitting, um, I had the voltage drop down to uh, probably around 9 volts or something like that. So of course the power of my true SDX was uh, going down also. So the thing is that if you build the, the whole filter with the, the diode bridge and the other capacitors that are in the original schematic, 
if you're using a transformer basically you have 220 or 110 AC coming in and then you have uh, voltage coming out also AC going into the filter make sure that voltage is uh, at least around 15 volts so this way the, your voltage regulator will uh, uh, perform well but what I did I actually removed the the bridge part the rectifying bridge and the capacitors and all that filtering so I left only the part with the um, uh, electrolytic capacitors I have three ceramic capacitors and two inductors and one of my other friends um, also he, he used to be a, an amateur radio operator he used to work on cruise ships with me he came over and I showed him the filter and he told me to put a second capacitor which actually made things a lot better because the filtering was uh, was uh, better and the voltage was a little bit uh, stabilized so right now I'm using a different power supply so I don't have the voltage drop because even with the without the rectifier bridge and a proper 12 volts uh, DC coming into the filter uh, I still had a voltage drop down to uh, somewhere around 10 volts 10.5 volts something like that so what I did I have this Vodafone uh, charger I think it's for Huawei yeah uh, this one is 12 volts uh, 2 amps instead of 1 and it made a difference actually the voltage drop is not that uh, that low right now so Luca uh, you said that you build um, power supply so if you build the filtering and the voltage regulator sorry um, you might want to wonder what kind of voltage do you have coming into the filter because if that voltage is lower and you're just like me and you have somewhere around 12 volts uh, that might be the issue so you might need somewhere around um, um, 15 volts coming into the filter if you have everything with the rectifier bridge and so on but this filter works pretty well and I'm gonna put the, the schematic on the screen right now as you can see in the schematic uh, I have the first capacitor the first filtering capacitor is 4700 microfarads then I have uh, three ceramic capacitors uh, if I believe they're 100 nanofarads each and uh, two inductors now depending on the power that you want to go through the filter you might want to increase the the size of the toroid i used uh, ft50-43 and the wire size was uh, 0.45 millimeters if you want to use uh, more power you might want to increase the toroid size and also the wire size but the value of each inductor it has to be somewhere between 180 up to 220 microfarads now make sure you actually uh, calculate them you build them and you measure both of them to be the same uh, the same value and after that once you install them on the board make sure you measure them again because they might change the properties and with this um, um, 43 material and small toroids um, it's actually very very easy to change the value of the inductor just by uh, moving one turn uh, and the value will change dramatically so <laughs> you might want to check uh, after you solder them and once the values are equal on both of them you might want to also uh, glue them with something I use some white glue and I glue the turns on the toroid and also the toroid to the board and after that uh, my buddy Alex told me that to add a second capacitor which is nearly half the value of this one so I have 2200 microfarads and the filter works fantastic and right now I have 12 volts DC coming into the input of the filter and I have 12 uh, sorry 12.5 volts or 13 volts something like that uh, coming out of the filter so right now I'm just going to do a really quick test on the TrueSDX and show you how it works. So I have the input, you know, the, the uh, output from the uh, power supply coming in with 12 volts DC. Comes into the filter. I have a, a voltmeter over here as well so I can see the voltage drop. And the output of the filter goes to the TrueSDX. And right now, if you watch it, I'm on the 40 meters band. I'm gonna click uh, this uh, PTT button I'm in the CW mode 
I'm getting 7.3 watts on the true SDX and the voltage drop goes to 11.95 something like that so it works so Luca I think your issue it might be that you don't have enough voltage coming into the filter going to the voltage regulator and having a, a little bit more voltage coming in might fix your issue and also make sure you have enough power so for me one one amp was not enough to go through the filter and uh, so I won't have a, a big voltage drop with the other power supply um, I had the one amp the voltage was going down to 10.5 uh, volts and uh, once I increased the um, the amps to two instead of one you see it's just going down to 11.95 uh, volts so that was the fix and right now I'm getting good reports no more issues with the <laughs> with the modulation and the problem turns out that it was no RF coming in um, into the true SDX uh, uh, on the coax so the power the actually the the problem that I had with the bad modulation was the bad filtering from the power supply and adding uh, adding a second filtering like an external filtering uh, was actually the good solution that worked for me so yeah that's that's the the thing that uh, worked for me and i hope it works <laughs> okay for others as well and yeah that's pretty much the video for today i haven't had any time at all for projects and radio at all i haven't been on air at all last week i just worked on the on the sailing website and on the on the youtube channel editing videos so yeah uh, this week i'm gonna post today actually this video and probably on saturday i'll be back with the normal videos uh, because i promised i'm gonna be back with a ptt called cw transceiver the latest uh, uh, and updated schematic that i'm using right now so anyway thanks for watching i hope it helps uh, if you have other other fixes put them down in the comments uh, because people read and they might find the answers over there so anyway thanks for watching 73 and have a magical weekend because it's pretty close